Hello, everyone, and welcome to another super cool radio interview. I'm your host, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have a great guest joining me at this time who I'm very excited to have on the podcast. On Halloween, San Antonio based Danella Drive released their latest single entitled Simeon Transmission. Please welcome the bassist for Danella Drive, Andrew Salazar. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's up, man? And thank you again, dude. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Of course, of course. It's awesome to have you on the podcast. Uh, honestly, like, the the new single sounds incredible. It's very different from what I normally listen to, but that's also what I really like about it is because yeah. it has its own like unique sound to it. That's cool. That's cool. No, I'm glad but I could I'm throw some new stuff at you. Different sounds. Oh, for sure. I, I, I like it because, again, you guys um, don't really fit into, like, just, like, one genre. You guys kind of have, like, influences and, like, sounds of, like, many different genres. And that's what I really like and appreciate. Cool, man. Yeah, for sure. Now, we try and throw, like, a, a lot of different styles in our music. We love all kinds of different styles of music. We love our heavy. We love You know, we love our thrash. But we also love our, our funk. We love our, our hip-hop. You know, we love it all, man. We try and kind of include it all, you know. Oh, for sure. And, I, and what I really like, obviously, like, um, all three of you guys, obviously, you're, you're a three-piece, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, like, uh, obviously, all you get, all three of those pieces, you know, the, well, actually, with the vocals as well, making four, um, they're all highlighted in very different ways, like, throughout the music. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'm curious for you, especially, like, focus on the bass playing, like, you got a very unique sound and style uh, yeah. to, like, your bass playing. So, like, I'm curious, like, how did you develop that? Dude, honestly, man, my goal ultimately is just to be like uh, per- percussive and but still melodic, kind of carry the groove, but you know, but still be aggressive. And I think it's just from um, I started slapping like pretty young, like doing the slap bass stuff when I was like probably like, twelve years old, eleven years old. And uh, but I was also into like heavy stuff, you know what I mean, like like the metal at the time, and then uh, you know like your primuses, and then I think I saw. Um, um, like Ryan Martini was coming up at the time, you know, Corinth was coming up at the time. I was a total new metal kid, you know what I mean? When I started playing bass, so I think it was just a mixture of like the the times and then uh, and the aggressive uh, kind of bass playing because the heavy, you know, because the heavy music at the time, for sure. I would say that was a big influence. Oh gosh, yeah, definitely. I can, I definitely picked up on that aggressiveness, mm-hmm. uh, like in your style of playing, but also like you're pretty precise too. Like it's not just yeah. aggressive being aggressive; you're actually like very precise with mm-hmm. like your note playing as well yeah now i try and like uh like i'll stop like practice and like tell my drummer like hey what are you what are you doing exactly with your feet like i need to know you know i want to follow it exactly you know what i mean or, or pretty come pretty close you know but I also don't want to like completely take away what he's doing too it's just it's kind of find like a happy medium you know what i mean of uh you know you don't want to overplay but you know you will i just try like i said lock in with the drummer as much as i can you know for sure Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. And you guys achieved that very well. So, like, I'm I'm curious. Obviously, I, I'm going to be diving into the new single here pretty soon. But, like, kind of going for you guys is, like, catalog. you guys have, like, really, like, evolved your sound from, like, when you first started to, mm-hmm. like, now. So, like, I'm curious for you, like, what were some, like, the biggest changes to, like, evolve the sound into Danella Drive right now? Uh, probably, honestly, was my brother switching to vocals. Because I don't know if you – I don't know how far back you dove into the music. Um. We have our, because we have some stuff on Spotify, we have some stuff on Bandcamp, and we have, the stuff on Bandcamp isn't on um, Spotify, like a lot of it. Yeah, I noticed that, yeah. Yeah, we had, we actually, at one point, we had a female vocalist, you know, and she was in the band with us for two years, and then we kind of went through another vocalist after we, you know, after she left the band, um, or kicked her out, whatever. (laughs) uh, Yeah, so, after we kicked her out. Minor details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) 
So uh, we had a, a, a guy come in and, and sing for us. And then my brother was like, we're getting kind of frustrated. We're kind of stuck in kind of this weird in-between period with members and stuff. And my brother was just like, man, screw it. I'm going to, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to, I'm going to sing. He's just like, I'm going to try it, man. Let's, like, let's go. You know what I mean? So, you know, it was just me and him, me and my brother. My brother's Aiden, the guitarist vocalist. Um, so, yeah, uh, he just started taking vocal lessons. And we didn't even have, to have a drummer at the time. It was just me and my brother. Um, this is, like, 2017. And then, um, yeah, then we found a drummer, Steven Rodriguez, and then we've been kind of going ever since. That, that, I would say that was a big, big change right there. My brother switching to vocals, and then when we, when we found Steven on drums. All right. For your brother, like, well, obviously, you know, you can't speak directly for him, but like, was there any kind of learning curve for him to like become the vocalist of this band? Oh yeah, dude. He was like, it was crazy too. Cause like he, like we, we put out this single called feel better and I sang the verses actually. And then he um, would just sing on the, on the choruses. And I was like, man, you have a really unique, cool voice. But uh, I guess his thing was, Oh, I'll just scream the whole time. You know what I mean? But it just kind of didn't work. So, he, you know, he was just kind of throwing his voice out. You know what I mean? It was just, you know, so he had to actually had to learn how to sing properly. You know what I mean? He had to learn how to, like, you know, not overdo it. When to, you know, I guess the breathing techniques, too, you know, when it comes to doing singing. Yeah, so he learned all that stuff, dude. Like, he he really, like, he was taking, like, at one point he was taking two vocal lessons a week to try and get, you know, better. You know what I mean? But. But still, like, uh, yeah, it was definitely a learning curve. Like, like, like I said, he had, he was just doing back vocals, and then, and he would just like scream, like blurt out random stuff. And then, then he went from full on vocalist. Now he's like, you know, I remember he used to hate like writing lyrics too. Like, you know, he was like a, like a homework assignment for him. He didn't want to even he was would get him mad, and uh, but now he like. You know, he he'll come to me and he has like all the lyrics written out like randomly one night. You know, I mean? all the vocal melodies, all the lyrics. I'm just like, damn, dude, that's that's pretty cool. You know what I mean? To see just that growth, for sure. Oh, definitely. And you know, obviously, just going through you guys' catalog a little bit, like there's definitely been a lot of like, obviously, like you know, you guys have evolved and like grown too, just with you know, kind of the topics, the lyrics, you know, the song structures, all of that. You guys have definitely evolved so much, uh, you know, throughout what I've listened to. Nice. So. That does bring us to right now. So obviously, as I said on Halloween, you guys dropped a new single, Simeon Transmission. So before we dive into the music, because I obviously got some questions about that, but like I want to focus on the title. How yeah. did that come about? That is definitely a question for my brother, man. Um, I don't know. I th I, th I think he uh I don't know. I honestly I haven't asked him where he got that. Like he pretty much we wrote the song and then he literally like Maybe a couple of days later, he was like, "I have this melody," and 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 he was kind of just singing it, like humming, the, like the semi on trend. Like he was just summing. I was like, "That's pretty cool." Like I actually, I was like, "Ah, oh, I really like that." And but yeah, I don't, I don't know where he got that, dude. Honestly, I have no clue. I need, I need to ask him now. Now I need to know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would that would be a good question because like, like obviously, like I was listening to music, but I was like, this is just it's just such a unique title that like obviously. I've never seen like both of those words together in any sentence yeah. anywhere. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. I need, I need to, I need to ask. <laughs> <laughs> but shifted to the to the music side. So, like, what was like the writing and recording process for you guys? Okay, the writing process actually. Um, okay, let me think about that. Okay, it's for the song in particular for Simeon. Yes. Yep. For this thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, I think uh, our drummer he had that opening beat. Like he just started playing it that you know that snare kick snare pattern he was doing and we're like, that's my brother's that's pretty cool and so he started he came up with the, the intro riff and then he started messing around with the, the the following riff and then it just kind of just evolved people started bouncing off ideas off each other it just built from that like like i said that's and that's usually how it's the songs are written you know someone has an idea like a riff uh you know drum beat uh bass line you know and that's how usually a lot of the songs get written you know what i mean just and you just build off of them um I think that's as a party question, right? <laughs> My ADD. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so, how about for like the recording part? Did you guys like oh, you guys yeah. record like a studio? Do you guys do it at yeah, home? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, so, the recording process was um, we have a good friend named Landis here in San Antonio. Uh, he runs a studio called Siblo uh, Studios. It's like five minutes of the road for me. It's awesome. It's perfect. And uh, yeah, he has a badass studio, awesome studio. 
And uh, so we recorded guitar, bass, drums, and vocals there. We were there for about um, a week or so, but more like four days. And um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, we knocked all that stuff out. And then right now, our friend uh, Chris Mora, he uh, usually mixes and masters all of our stuff. And he's done stuff for a lot of like bigger bands like Upon a Burning Body, Kim Dracula, um, even some like hip hop people. He's um, done stuff for. So yeah, that's who makes it. But we did a whole album there. Like it's it's coming out in February. That that's where I was leading next with that. Uh, so like, can you give any hints of like what people can expect from this new album? Oh, dude. Okay, so like, um, I was talking to someone else about it. Uh, so what you hear on Simeon. For the follow-up single, it's like completely different. It's don't even expect the same thing. It's like uh, my my brother says it's like he compares it to Megadeth meets Mars Volta. If they were to make a song together, that's a combination. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I I can see it for sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it's wild, man. And the video is just it's gonna be just as wild. Like uh, you know, I don't you saw you saw the Simeon video, right? Yes, I did, and um, so, definitely a uh, lot, of, lot of moving lights and flashes. Yeah. yeah, so this one probably won't have as much flashes, but it, it actually revolves around this character my brother came up with called the Rift Creeper. It's like this like scumbag kind of musician. It's like the day in the life of uh, this character that we came up with, and and actually the guy who designed uh, the did all the art for the for Simeon Transmission, he made some props for it. Like you know, he went all out with these props. So. Uh, it's imagine like uh, you remember that show, that TV show Yo Gabba Gabba for for kids. Yes, yeah. Okay, so the, some of the characters' heads look like that, <laughs> like but like disgusting if that makes sense. Like like a like a Yo Gabba Gabba like on on acid in in hell. I don't know. <laughs> so like yeah, so it revolves around this character called the Rift Creeper, and you know he wakes up, you know chugs a beer, he plays PS Five, and then. He goes to the store to get more beer, and then he ends up at the strip club. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then he gets – we actually have a wrestler in the video, and then he gets thrown through a table uh, in, in the video at the strip club. And then, of course, we're playing on the stage at the strip club. So, like I said, it's it's this whole story. It's, it's going to be awesome. Like, I can't wait. Well, I'm really looking forward to checking that out. It seems like there's a, <laughs> a lot of moving pieces, and yeah, I'm curious yeah, yeah. how all that's going to fit together. Yeah, it's probably the most, like uh, – like we've never really had storylines in our videos and this is probably like the first time we've had like a, we like sat down and had like a whole, like, you know, story involved with one of our songs Bro, well, for one of our videos. Yeah. But really? for the rest of the album, man, it's going to be like, it, it's wild. Like we have different genres, different styles. Um, we have a instrumental song with like a saxophone solo. This guy came in and he just knocked it out of maybe, maybe four takes if that, and uh, yeah, it's it's a whole musical journey. That's all I can say, dude. <laughs> all right, so well, I do got some follow up questions for this. So, yeah. um, how'd you find a saxophonist? Oh, our our uh, our engineer Landis. He he's like you know into the, like the R and B kind of like a scene as well here in town. So uh, he he knew he knows a bunch of musicians, man. So yeah, he I think he plays with this band called the Blueprint here in town. That's that's his band, and he plays saxophone with them. Yeah, but that's how we got him. <laughs> All right, right, hey, right on, right on. So then also, like, um, kind of going back to the, the music video that incorporated more of a story to it. So what, was it, like, a different experience to, like, film or develop, you know, this story compared to, like, other music videos where it's mostly performance-based? Oh, yeah, dude. It's, like, you know, you, you have to do, like, you know, different angles, different, you know, reactions to things and, and like I said, the whole props thing now that's involved, like, yeah, it was like, a, it's taken, it's still being edited right now. So or it's going to get down to the wire. Like we wanted to release the song on December 4th, but you know, it, it'll be down to the wire when we have it actually finished because there's also going to be a, a little bit of a animation in the video too. And the artist's name is Gun Show. Um, he's, he actually used to work for, a, well, the editor used to be, he used to work for Adult Swim. And then... Uh, the animator, or I'm sorry, Gun Show. He's he's done work for like Andrew WK and, and Ozzy, and and uh, there's this hip hop artist named Malibu Ken, and that's actually how my brother found him. Through, um, he was a fan of this uh, artist Malibu Ken. It's it's a, a rapper named Aesop Rock. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Yep, I've heard of him. Yep. Yeah, 
Yeah. That's how we found. And then yeah, we're just a DM in the in Instagram, and then they they started talking back and forth and turned into this like year long collaboration from that. That that's awesome, you know. I, uh, yeah. Just you know, especially just a cold you know cold text somebody and actually mm -hmm. uh, you know kind of get a response. That that's cool. Like I, I'm really glad it worked out, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing uh, you know everything that you know that's gonna be part of the singles and the album. Uh, obviously yeah. coming coming out from in the next couple months and next month and all that so some of you guys have awesome things in the works yeah oh yeah dude we like i said we have content for 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 a while man we're gonna we're pretty good right now dude for sure for sure man we got like i said the full album we're gonna we want to release like probably two after after this next single another two more after that and we're kind of we're trying to decide whether we want to just like like Put out the singles or drop the whole because the album's like being mixed right now. Um, but we'll probably just drop the whole album in February, honestly. But we'll, we'll, we will definitely have videos with them. Well, right on. Well, again, I'm looking forward to checking everything out and, and the whole album when it's released too, just to see like just how like the just different the whole album sounds, you know, from yeah, like song to song, like, just everything. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> cool, man. Cool, dude. Cool. Thank you. So, but before we start closing this out, so I'm, I'm curious for you, obviously you guys are based out of San Antonio, Texas. So I'm curious for you guys, what's like the music scene like there? Dude, we are a heavy metal city, man. We're metal, metal. I think just Texas alone is just metal. You know what I mean? Like the hard, the hardcore, hardcore scene's big here too, man. Um, even last night, I, I was at Iron Maiden last night. And then uh, like Corn just sold out here the other night with, Go with Gojira. And, uh, yeah, man. So, and, and just the metal scene alone, like uh, locally too, like a lot of bands um, playing hardcore metal here, man. And it's weird. And I feel like we're like in a weird spot too, because, you know, we're not like a metal band, you know what I mean? But we're definitely influenced by metal. So sometimes we, we run into the issue of like uh, promoters don't know who we should play with. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I feel like we could fit with anyone. Like, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know. That's just my opinion. But yeah, I feel like we run into that issue a little bit where like, ah, they're, they're bad. Ah, they're cool, but they're not heavy. You know what I mean? Or then we play some shows and we're like the loudest, heaviest band there. So like I said, we're in this weird spot, <laughs> but I like it. Yeah, it is interesting. I know like obviously some promoters try to group like all similar sounding yeah. bands in for a show, but like, I always kind of like it when you get like one or two, like, out, like kind of different bands like when you have like a punk band and a ska band like it works yeah. but like stuff like that i always i always have more fun at shows like that you know that's just me though oh dude we were in this uh this contest two years ago and it was called uh the battle for the vakken festival and, and it, yeah, yep. we actually made it all the way to the finals <laughs> and like the number one thing i heard from like the band was like they're not they're not even metal what the fuck you know what i mean like but we made it all the way to the final. Like we uh, we won here in town, and then we won uh, the regional round in Austin during South by Southwest, and then we won. We went to the finals in LA. You know what I mean? But yeah, and then, like I said, we weren't like traditional, you know, thrash metal or death metal or deathcore or whatever. Like we weren't. But you know, I, I thought that was cool how we made it that far by not even being a metal band, really. <laughs> Well, I think it just shows that you guys are very you you guys can appeal to like a wide variety. Of like obviously, was was it like voting based or was it judge based? Like I forget how that judges judges yeah oh, okay. Every, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. So uh, do you know who, yeah. wait, who do you know who you guys lost to though? Yeah, yeah, they're they're uh, they're actually cool cool guys. They're from San Diego. They're called a uh, Mithrium. Okay, that was in twenty twenty two. Yeah, and they actually it was it was really cool of them too. So like uh. The guy who actually was um, a part of the battle for Bakken, he actually booked us twice in San Diego now at a brick by brick at San Diego with, with Mithrium and then with his band. So, yeah, so it wasn't like a total, like, you know, it sucked we lost, but, you know, that he still liked us a lot enough, even enough to book us twice. You know, and we, every time we played in San Diego, it's been like really good crowds too, like at least two or 300 people. You know what I mean? So it, it was awesome. It was worth it for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely some, you know, still some great, you know, pretty good yeah. came out of it for, you know, not yeah. winning. Obviously, you got a great connection. Dude, you know what's crazy is, okay, so when we played the first time there, 
It was a black, like straight up black metal. Like everyone was in corpse paint. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the whole, you know, whole thing, you know, corpse paint, the, the metal studs and shit. And yeah, dude, it was, I, I feel their metal, which is, you know, it's funny too. It's black metal at the beach. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> but no, I, I don't, I'm not really too familiar with, with their local scene, honestly, but as far as I can tell, it's pretty metal <laughs> for sure. Oh, I got you. I got, that would be very interesting. Yeah. Um, I was not, ex I was not expecting that. Um, so saying, man, but, we played like all kinds of styles of shows, man, death core, death metal shows. And I even had the death metal dudes come up to us and be like, that was refreshing. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I guess. So that's really cool. You know, that we can change, not change, but like, you know, people, you know, kind of see what we're doing and then they can appreciate it. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I think that's the big reason for, you know, a part of to, to make music too is not obviously like you have to you have to enjoy it too but also like it's cool when you see like that appreciation and respect from other people too no for sure dude so now uh, as we're trying to close this interview out so obviously we, you guys got a lot of great things in the works for the end of this year into early 2025 but like what's kind of the plans for going forward for 2025 for Danella drive uh, right now, man, hopefully just playing, playing some shows, booking more shows, hopefully maybe a tour or two, um, content and, and honestly hit the studio. That's, you know, that's, that's my favorite part of it, man, is, uh, creating the music and, and, and you know, you, you create the music and you have an idea of how it's going to sound in your head. And then usually afterwards, you're just like, man, like it came out way better than I even thought, you know, it's. So that's probably my favorite part of it, honestly. And, and I can say the same things for these these songs we're, we're about to put out right now. Like, they came out way better than I thought. Well, that's really cool. Like, obviously, you, you know, you should, you know, enjoy what you put out, but they actually exceed your expectations. Like, yeah. that is always, like, a, a, just an amazing feeling. Yeah, no, for sure, man, for sure. Yeah, because there was even songs, I, I, I even have a song in particular on this album where I was like, I don't know about this one. <laughs> like, maybe we're just reaching i don't know too far <laughs> but then like you know once my brother laid down the vocals i was like damn that's actually really cool you know what i mean so it changed my perspective on it for sure oh so and sometimes like you know just listening to the song but then listening to the finished song yeah. is it, it changes like your appreciation and like perspective on it oh for sure man definitely mm -hmm. so I, I'm, I got one more question that we close this out but like Going back to the album just real quick, something I just thought of, I, I was curious for you. So, like, who came up with the instrumental idea to uh, place an instrumental song on there? Oh, dude, we've actually had um, um, instrumentals before. We have an instrumental on our first record um, called Bloom uh, on Bloomer. It's a song called Danky King. And uh, so we, we've always kind of dabbled in it. We've always talked about it. But I think what was the curveball with this one was my brother wanted – he's always talked about wanting a, a saxophone solo. But – other than that, like, you know, we love instrumentals, you know what I mean? We, you know, we grew up on old Metallica and, you know, Orion and Call of Cthulhu and, you know, all those instrumentals. So, yeah, dude, you know, we, we I like them, honestly. You just get to jam. You don't got to worry about, because, you know, singing, honestly, like, because like, that's what I struggle with is singing and playing, you know, but yeah, you just go up there and jam, like, and that's what I do at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Like. I don't want to sing, but I, I do it now. I actually sing a lot more than I used. Like I remember, like I used to not even be able to like even talk or or I'd have to stop what I was doing just to even you know play. But now, yeah, it's it's becoming second nature now for sure. No, right. Well, I'm I'm glad you know. Obviously, it's a big part to you know use your hands, but also to use your voice to sing. Like yeah. it is. And like some people just may look so effortlessly that like they're just yeah, like like it's so easy. <laughs> And then, like, you actually try it and go, man, this is way harder than what it looks. Yeah, way harder, man, for real. Like, it's like, and it's weird because, like, it's like one day when your brain's like, oh, okay, and then it just starts happening. I don't know how to explain it. I guess the repetition, I don't know. It, it's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's it starts clicking at some point. But, yeah, yeah. just starting out, it just, it, it it is just, it feels like it's ten times harder than what it is. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. <laughs> But now, uh, as we're closing this out, so for everyone watching and listening, where are the best places to find Danella Drive online? Oh, dude, we're everywhere. We're everywhere, man. Um, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, 
And then our music's everywhere too. Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your music, we're there. Bandcamp is probably like, you know, the best place to get like our whole entire catalog. Um, but but yeah, man, we're everywhere. Just look us up at Donella Drive. We're not any anything else. Just at Donella Drive. You'll find us. Well, right on. Well, I'll leave some links for Donella Drive in the description of this podcast. Please check out and support them. Latest single, Simeon Transmission, is available as well. That link will be in the description. But Andrew, thank you so much for stopping by Super Cool Radio. I had a fantastic time chatting with you. Oh, dude, thank you, man. Appreciate it, dude. For real, thank you. Of course, for Andrew Sal- Salazar of Denali Drive, I'm your host, always, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this episode of Super Cool Radio. And remember, stay frosty. <laughs>